All right, let's get started. Um, welcome. This is the New Alm Tree Commission um, Tree Advisory Commission meeting. The date is January seventh, two thousand sixteen. I'm Molly Tranel Nelson, the chair, and we'll go around and do introductions. I'm Floyd Alwyn. I'm Lisa Langer. Tony Gugisberg. Steve Kaler, city engineer. Scott Sparlin. William Swanson, the energy service representative. All right, thank you all for joining us today. To start off, did everyone get a chance to read last, uh, last meeting's agenda that was sent out ahead of time? And I will take a motion for someone to approve that or if there's any amendments needed. I would so move that we accept it as such. Second. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we have, um, it says the November 5th uh, minutes were not approved yet either, so we'll go ahead and take a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. All right, thank you. Now on to old business. The first is the city tree reimbursement programs. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. After the, uh, the minutes, which is a spreadsheet that was inserted into the agenda that shows the 2015 tree reimbursement program activity. <coughs> May recall last meeting we had, I believe, 25, and that has increased now to 26 for a total cost of approximately 5,200 and a total reimbursement of approximately 2,800. So kind of moving on to the budget side, uh, you had a budget of 6,000 and uh, you've got a balance from 2015 of 2293.03. And as I recall at the last meeting, there was a motion to uh, carry over or request carry over of the unused balance for 2016. So when the finance director requests those numbers we'll we'll turn it in for the commission probably in february as i recall so that's where we're at does anyone have any questions about that okay hearing none we will move on to the puc tree reimbursement program okay thank you commissioners uh, so just after the uh, city side program uh, is the relief summary. Uh, I believe, uh, I guess uh, technically the year hasn't closed out yet, but I do not expect to um, receive any more tree rebates. So this will be our 2015 year summary. Um, about 64 total trees planted. Um, and the total for tree reimbursement uh, was $3,880.38. Uh, and then advertising, we did have one ad to go out, um, so 44.80, and our total relief spending uh, came to $3,925.18, um, and that's a bit higher than uh, expected for that year. Uh, however, we did have funds remaining within the uh, total conservation improvement program funding, uh, so I allowed that to uh, continue. Uh, and then I believe our 2016 fund is set for uh, $3,000 as well. Um, and depending on total funds used within the other programs, within the conservation improvement programs, um, you know, we may be able to exceed that uh, by a, a you know, varying amount. Are there any questions for the uh, summary report? Not really a question, but I noticed there's quite a few maples. Well, actually, it is a question. Do, is that typical most years that the majority is maples? Um, I have seen that, um, actually, for all of the years since I've uh, started tracking this individually. Uh, maples have um, you know, dominated the makeup for tree planting, um, and that can be a bit difficult. I do try to encourage customers to look at other trees, but... Um, at the sh uh, same time, the maple tree is almost the optimum shade tree, so uh, with a program like this, um, you, you may see that. Okay. I see a plum tree on here. What, what's a toka plum tree? Do you know what that's called? Yeah, that's a, just a 
little one? Smaller plum, plum tree. I think uh, you questioned me on that or asked me, I don't know, where, wherever they used it, if mm -hmm. we felt it qualified, so. Yeah. And going back to the, the maples, um, Madam Chair, to, you know, people, you know why the maples are on the high category? Because they have the nice red fall color. Mm -hmm. I always said if the elms or anything, a hackberry had a fall color, yeah. they would sell just as many. And that's what people look at is mm -hmm. some of the characteristics of what the tree has to offer besides just mm -hmm. shade. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. okay. All right, any further questions? Okay, sounds like we can move on to our Buckthorn Removal Volunteer Program. Ellen, do you have an update for us? Thank you. Ellen Van Cura, 833 Cottonwood Street. Um, it, as you know, it's been ideal weather, proud, the warmest weather uh, fall in history, is that it? Something like that. So we were able to, uh, as far as the, um, we were able to work a lot into November. And um, the, as you notice, South Park, due to Mike, thanks to Mike Schneider and his friends, has basically been cleaned out now. Both second, the second growth and, and primary growth is pretty much been cleaned out, so it looks very nice. Looks bare, but <laughs> um, bike trail, we worked a lot. We were able to get sentenced to serve twice uh, on um, 16th South. That's the segment of the bike trail that has South Market Park on the left, and there is a huge deep swath, uh, and we were worked there and got mm, probably 80% of it cleaned out. As far as private property, um, there was a, there's a large uh, lot, private lot that was infested uh, next to Adams Park, Cottonwood Street, the street I live on. Uh, that was private property. I t contacted the private owner, was not interested in doing it himself, but um, it was cleaned out and I sent a letter asking for a donation. Don't know if that happened. I've recently contacted uh, Welcome Home Company, who owns a huge um, block of of uh, property from R Ridgeway on German going south. And again, um, owner is not interested at all in contributing to or taking it out, but gave me permission to do it if I <laughs> do it myself, basically. <laughs> so I just, um, that that's probably the next place we'll work, to, you know, depending on how the winter goes. Um, again, we had sense to serve twice. Um, there, I had one meeting with Tom. There's quite a bit of, there's two areas of, uh, of trash, sort of a circle of discarded uh, water dispenser things, like you see in offices. And uh, there was a squatter there on right up that got exposed when we started taking out buckthorn. So he was going to look at the look at that because that's quite unsightly. I haven't didn't know he wasn't here, and I haven't talked to him since then. So that's what we've been up to. There's a beautiful. Um, wetland in the right in the city limits of Sleepy Eye that is completely surrounded by buckthorn and I'm going to, it happens to be outside the nursing home where my parents live so I look at it all the time so that's my next. I believe it's probably owned by, um, by uh, Sleepy Eye St. Mary's because it's next to their football field, the high school and the cemetery so I'm going to try to organize that because it's a uh, quite a beautiful piece of property. And I have already met with uh, their head of Park and Rec because they're, uh, what is it called, Fish Sportsman's Park. 
mm-hmm. is uh, just a beautiful park and has a lot of, I don't know if they ever took it out. So I'm kind of going around to Brown County too. Those birds can fly from <laughs> sleepy eye to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you, Ellen. You're welcome. All right, next we will move on to the Minnesota Green Corps program. Um, at our last meeting, myself and Lisa and Mark were kind of assigned as a subcommittee to work on this. Uh, this week I checked and they're not yet open for applications because I thought I would download the application ahead of time. And um, and last year they were due May 4th, so I'm guessing they'll be due around that time again. Um, so. I'm supposed to get an email from them when the application process is open. So hopefully then at that time um, our subcommittee can meet and then uh, send that application in. There were still some um, questions we had regarding who would provide the supervision, um, some city office space and things like that um, that we'll need to work out with Tom. But since he's not here today, you know, we won't be able to work on that now. So. That is all I had for an update. If anyone has anything further on that. No? Okay, then we can move on to the utility bill stuffer, uh, the mailing flyers. Uh, last meeting we had uh, voted on April and August, reserving those. And William, do we have those dates correct? Uh, yep, that's okay. correct. Uh, so both of those dates are reserved for us currently. Perfect. Um, Unfortunately, I do not have the exact date. We would need to have those submitted at this time. I can okay. ask about that at a later time. I am guessing that we will have one more um, tree advisory meeting before that due date, though. Would that be safe to say? I believe so, you know, okay. as long as we have a okay. quorum. Sure. Um, so our uh, April 1, we had discussed, um, typically we do the big tree contest for that flyer, and then August being the disease, some sort of um, disease information for trees. And so I'll open that up for discussion if people want to comment on that. The disease, I guess I just, if we're looking for ideas for that, um, I, I, I'm concerned about the oaks. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, Madam Chair, I, would, I was yeah. just gonna mention that, uh, that burr oak blight is a real going to be a real problem mm-hmm. um, the last couple of years and it's showed up in New Ulm here the last two years also so in August it's probably starting people start noticing it about August yeah so that might be a good one to do that July August so it would be okay. a good, good topic okay I'll write that down okay we could maybe do something on um, I know because we get a lot of calls. I have oak wilt, and then it turns out to be blight. Mm-hmm. So maybe how to tell the difference or mm-hmm. something on the two of them, or yeah, just to how tell the difference. Um, okay, so um, <coughs> do we need to appoint a subcommittee on this? Um, so last year, Tom and I kind of worked on the flyer for the big tree contest one. Uh, I guess I was the subcommittee. And um, we kind of have that already in a cookie cutter format. We would just need to change the species out. I'd be willing to do that again. Um, it really isn't that much work because we already have our the walnut chosen as a species. So, um, and we've got our topics. So if someone else was willing to do the August one, you know, then we could hit it that way. Molly, back to that, the big tree contest. We never, we probably need to, we made that change last meeting about yes, where the tree's located and who owns it and whatever. That probably needs to be put on. Okay, the The new rules. Yeah, Yeah, update the rules. Okay, a problem. And I think. Okay. Yeah private property, the winner must be the property owner. All right. We can make sure that's included on there. Yep. Okay. I don't think we need to vote on either of that then because we kind of pushed it off till next time. So, 
All right, so we could move into the big tree contest since we're kind of talking about it already. It's our next topic of mm -hmm. discussion. <coughs> yeah, well, we'll be using the same format as last year and the times. That part would be the same. It's just okay. a matter of changing it to the walnut. Okay. And the fact, we be sure and get that in, that on private property, the winner must be the property owner and on public property, the first submission will be the winner. Okay. So we don't have any problems. <laughs> yeah. And I hope with the walnut, we might get more entries this year. People might be more familiar because it's kind of easy <laughs> to know if you have a walnut tree in your yard. <laughs> I have a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we'll get a few more <laughs> this year. Um, anything further on the big tree contest or the uh, mailing flyers? Okay. So next is the home show. Um, so we typically have a booth this year. The home show is from April 1st to the 3rd. And we decided a uh, previous meeting that we we're going to share a booth with Park and Rec. So that saves us some money. Um, and so we need to schedule... Um, commissioners to work that booth and then volunteers as well and Floyd in the past you yeah. have done that yeah I'll do that again okay and I also brought a sign-up sheet today just so people because I know you're all so excited to work it that you can sign up today too and I'll hand that to you then mm -hmm. um, if you want to right away get the good time slot <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's actually pretty fun to work because Ellen oh, typically yeah. sells buckthorn blasters like crazy, and it's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, April 1st through the 3rd is when it is, so Friday through Sunday. Yeah. All right, any further questions on that? reason right through um, the next is EAB planning emerald ash borer planning um, the question was do we need a subcommittee um, and we've kind of kept tabling this <laughs> we're kicking the can down the road um, I think at some point we'll want to move on it but I don't feel like this is the time since we'll be working on some We've already got a couple of subcommittees working on other things. I think maybe we should um, put that off a little bit since we'll be working on the Green Corps applications and some other things that will take quite a bit of time. Um, but I'm open to other suggestions from people as well. All right. I'm just going to take that as a, we don't need a subcommittee. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I didn't hear any motions that we do. So, um, so then next is the forester position. So um, we could kind of do some of these as a group, and then also the tree survey. Um, so do pe people feel the same about those that we could approach those topics at a future date, or do we want to tackle those now? Isn't the tree survey something that might be covered under that um, the grant we might? Have for the Green Corps thing? Yeah, I think that could tie in nicely to that. Yeah, you mm -hmm. the, the tree survey for sure. Okay. Um. All right. Um, and the Forester position... Um, with the Green Corps and then this other grant that we're going to talk about in news business, um, I don't know how the three of those would all work together. Um, so at this time, I'd say with the Forester position, we just wait on that as well until we see how these other opportunities develop. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, reading through the Community Forest through Citizen Engagement, proposal um, some of these things were you know mentioned as um, helping you to score mm -hmm. high to get that 
Yeah. And, and, and you know, one was forest position, tree survey, you know, all of right. these things. And, and maybe, you know, that almost has to be something we have in place, sure. you know, regardless whether we act on it or not, mm -hmm. um, to at least say that we have a subcommittee appointed to it. That's um, a good point. Yeah, so the deadline for that grant, I think, is in a month. Right. Um, so that would mean we'd have to act on all of those items. Okay. But what we maybe need to do is 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 go ahead to 5A, see what those are, and go yeah. back and re 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 uh, review uh, item I through N. You know. Okay. Maybe we should go right to 5A. Yeah, I would. That sounds like a good idea because I think they're all related, like right. you said. Mm -hmm. So okay. you know, if you're going to apply for, if we are going to apply for that. Uh, we need to have at least designated that ahead sure. of time. Okay, so let's jump forward to new business. <coughs> um, 5A that he's referring to is a new grant opportunity called Improving Community Forest Through Citizen Engagement. And I have a handout here. Did everyone get a chance to read this on the email that yeah. Tom sent out? Yeah. Okay. Did you get a chance to read it? Okay. So basically this is, um, so I should say right up front that this is a grant from the DNR. And uh, since I'm a DNR employee, uh, there's probably a conflict of interest um, with me uh, taking the lead on that. So I'll have to kind of step back from that and not be involved with the application process. Really? Um, just because the DNR is the one handing out the money. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you're Both. you're a citizen. Correct, yeah. You know, you wouldn't be, be doing this on DNR time. I, I can't see any conflict of interest as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to help. I just right. uh, don't want to be the one who actually puts the application in. <laughs> right. I was wondering about, it said that any participating municipality must provide a match of not less than 20%, mm -hmm. of which half may be in the form of in-kind support. So that means we have to have some money to throw towards it, right? Yes, and I think our budget for the Tree Advisory Commission would count towards that, I believe. Um, okay. You know, the money we spend on trees and things like that. Um, Mark, would you know if that is correct? That, that would be correct. But okay. And I think it was 25 percent match, was it not? It, was uh, not, it says of not less than 25 percent. Right. Okay. But if we look at that, but it's 50 percent, yeah. In kind. In kind. So for example, yeah. so it's really 12 and a half percent. Say you went to the 50,000. Um, 25 percent of that is what? 20 or 12,000 something? Is that correct? Yep. 12,500 and half of that would be cash. cash. Somehow yeah. cash, the city has to come up with cash. Right. Ma the Madam plan. Chair, um, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mark, would it be okay for you to come to the microphone? I think the the audience and people watching would like to hear your your advice. Good point. I'm sorry. Um, Mark Schnobrick, I'm, I'm just a forester working with Tom Schmitz and, and um, with the Tree Commission here, the Advisory Commission. and. Yeah, you're right. So uh, technically then with a 25% match, half of that could be in-kind, which could be staff time. It could be equipment used by the parks or the street department to assist with planting or maintaining. That could be in-kind a service. And, and then the other half of that 25% match has to be in a cash form of so, some form or another. It could be purchasing trees without utilizing grant funds for purchasing trees could be utilized for that so um, <coughs> the, I think the big note on this one is um, it's coming up quickly uh, February 8th it has to be done completed there's only 10 communities that are going to be awarded this and that is based upon how many applications they get and how much though it, I think it was three million or something or a little more that would be spread out between those 10 communities um, if everybody asked for 50 grand, it would go pretty quickly. Um, the other component is this, of course, is the citizen um, 
um, involvement. And uh, New Ulm is probably in good shape with that. I'm thinking just seeing what you've done in the past with your citizen activity in, in community forestry. So that wouldn't be a wouldn't be much of a problem, but that is a major component. In other words, that and that comprises of getting citizens to volunteers to plant the trees. In other words, city personnel cannot be uh, paid or part of the grant to plant those trees. It needs to be volunteers. The volunteers are utilized in the tree survey. And all these things, if you notice and read through the grant, there's a lot of collaborative effort through the University of Minnesota, through the Nursery uh, Association, through Tree Trust, all of those entities are part of this grant. And how you can realize that is that when they went to the legislature and requested these dollars, those entities were part, they're getting compensated through that grant to help you assist that. And that really is what makes this grant so feasible for these smaller communities and that you're getting a lot of help. There's a lot of assistance out there. If you also noticed a portion of the grant covers uh, uh, technical assistance and, and administ technical administrative contractual work. So part of that could be used to have someone come in and assist with the grant um, administratively. It, it can't necessarily, can't be somebody on the city staff, it needs to be someone outside of that. Um, so if you notice, that's also a component of that. That would help cover some of the, there was some thought of of with the Green Corps person in conjunction with. And if you notice, there was part of the standards they were asking in those, in those um, uh, standards or what you've got in your community so far was, mm -hmm. are you a Green Step community? And I think New Ulm is participating in that program in one fashion or another with, uh, with the PCA. Um, and that portion would also be a something that the city could utilize in applying for the grant that you already are part of that program too, so. Um. Madam Chair, I, I would ask that the members scroll down to page eight, evaluation criteria for the selection process and, and realistically go through and see how we would so possibly score before we, you know, this is limited to 10 communities and I hate to see us put in a lot of work into a proposal uh, and you know it would be great probably again uh, the next year or the year after that we would have some of that in in, in line uh, already doing the work and so on and I know how that works with grants but um, you know l let's realistically see wh how many of those uh, you know 15 items uh, how, how do we how do we stack up um, do we cover those mark brought up the the notion that um, you know, we have the green step. Uh, are we a designated Tree City USA? No. Um, uh, has ha, Have we received a growth award? No. Um, so, you know, those are points that score against us or, or that we wouldn't score with um, other communities. And there are many communities, uh, I'm sure, that are going to go after this money and this grant. Um, and I don't want to throw a wet blanket on everything, but I, I want us to be realistic and not go through a lot of work unless we feel we have a, a chance, if not this year, but next year or the year after, because we would be laying the groundwork for down the road. And that's also you know, one of the things I think, is there, is there any one or more former groups that support local urban forestry, such as tree boards, garden clubs? I th we have that. Um, Will we provide the monetary match? Yes. Um, uh, have we received any prior grants that were tree or environmental grants and were they completed? Um, we have a person designated for responsible tree care. Do we? That's a question, you know. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm just thinking out loud and would like to hear the rest of the Commissioners, I have a question for Mark. That, yeah. uh, how often do I haven't heard of these happening before? So I'm assuming it doesn't happen every year. How often does this kind of grant opportunity come? The most recent one that just went through was a bonding grant that the DNR got. That was a um, there were actually two of them: 2008 to 2010 and 2010 to 2012, that involved EAB preparedness, 
of which small number of small communities were able to participate in. So it, it rolls around fairly often. Actually, there's a number of community forestry grants going through. But I would, um, I would beckon to differ a little bit with uh, uh, Commissioner Sparlin in the sense that I bet I'm thinking you meet a majority of those situations. I know you have received, when you d were a Tree City USA, you did receive a couple or at least some uh, growth awards back in, I think your first year of applying for Tree City USA was 1993 or so. And you were a recipient of the Tree City USA for almost uh, 11 years or so, uh, about that time. It's just the last few years that you uh, have been, have not been applying for it. Um, how we would an how you would answer that question is you would say that you have been a tree city USA in the past and that you have actually applied for uh, recognition again in sure. 2015. So um, you are certainly have a tree board, garden clubs. You meet those. Mm -hmm. But uh, does your community possess a tree inventory? Um, no, you don't. But that would be part of your request for this grant was to complete that, and that doesn't necessarily deter you from being awarded the grant. That just necess necessitates that you are in need of a grant to do that. And by doing this, you would, you would, you would be able to uh, um, enhance your community forestry program. You have a DNR certified tree inspector. Um, you are within 45 miles of a, uh, uh, a cooperating entity, which was the DNR itself, a forestry office here, right? Near New Ulm. Um, so, I wouldn't. This this grant is, is, is about everything you've been asking for. Mm -hmm. it, it's money. It provides yep. technical assistance. It includes and is um, part of the University of Minnesota. I know of a community just north of here that participated in what was called uh, a community tree inventory group. That was all volunteers. University comes in and helps train that, does the training. This is a two and a half year grant. It, it commences here starting in March or April of this year and goes, completion is in June of 2018. Gives you time to, to complete it. Doesn't have to be done in one year. Um, uh, provides you an opportunity to initiate your tree inventory. And if by chance you were able to get a Green Corps person you virtually would have a full-time person able to, that Green Corps person could be tied in to, to help, not administrate, but certainly to help implement this, this grant that you're receiving. And you'd have somebody here on a 20, uh, 40 uh, hour a week basis for about 11 months to get that grant going. And um, I think it's, I would certainly encur highly encourage you to take advantage of this. And um, throw your hat in the ring, and you don't know. You may not oh, get cool. it, but Madam Chair, I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting we don't do it. I'm just. I wanted to have this discussion. Yeah, no, this and I'm. Is and I'm glad that Mr. Schnoberg uh, brings up those good points because um, that's exactly what I was looking for for clarity. Because mm -hmm. um, we don't all have the kind of history with the Tree Commission and the city's past tree uh, uh, plan. Yeah. Uh, that you know some on the board do some of the older members and such I have another question um, would getting this grant potentially help us get the Green Corps grants because I see we'd be notified by February 19th it's true good point yeah we don't apply for the Green Corps one until a little bit after that so yeah, that's not till May 5th or so you're yeah, right yeah so I'm wondering if it could almost be a snowball effect if we did by chance get this one, then it might help us get the Green Corps one because we would have oh yeah. that funding in place. Good, good point. I think there's no question that that would be mm -hmm. the case. Okay. Did we have any other questions? I do. If isn't the process is if we want to apply for a grant, don't we have to run it past the Park and Rec, the, their group, and then? and then they would have to approve it, and then it has to go before the city council before you even make application for the grant. So I'm wondering about timelines. Well, the, the, grant, a, the grant applicant would be the city of New Orleans. Okay, but to get the approval to allow us to do it, do we have enough time to run that through to get the approval to do this? Because I know that was the talk with the other 
it was like we need to get this done because it's got to clear all these other right. agencies. Right. I, I, I don't know about the park and rec, but I would almost certainly think that the city council would have to approve mm -hmm. the proposal. I, Madam Chair, I would, I would agree also that you probably have to do that because there is, the money has to be expended first. In other words, this, the city of New Ulm would have to expend those dollars and it's on a total reimbursement basis. Now I know they, uh, they in most grants, they allow you to submit quarterly or bi-yearly or so um, receipts for the expenditures that you've incurred. Um, so it's not that the city would have to be out $30,000, $40,000 for two years. Um, but that is something to consider. That's something to consider. It's not, you don't get money up front for this. It would be a commitment. And I'm, I'm thinking what has happened with a number of grants, of course, if you can come up with the, with the number of trees to plant, you think you can come up with the number of volunteers to help plant those trees, um, figure out the cost Specific. for those trees and so on, you may ask for $40,000, but they may end up giving you $21,000 or it all varies. I'm sure it'll all take place at the DNR office when they evaluate the applications. But um, um, I, I think it's a golden opportunity for this community to really get a, 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 a foothold going and, and really get a, a leap on their community forestry program by a, certainly at least applying for this grant. You may not even get it, you don't know, I guess, but um, uh, it'd be something to think about. So it sounds like we would, I haven't looked at the application yet, but it, we would need potentially some kind of topic or direction on what we would want to use the funds for. And I'm just looking on page seven there, it talks about the things that it can be used for. Um, so, um, I guess do we want to discuss that now on what we would even want this grant to go for or do we just want to keep it broad and if we would go for it um, or is that something we would make a subcommittee to discuss? Madam Chair, uh, they are going to look for specifics. Okay. I mean they, they want numbers and just like Mr. Schnober said, um, you know, how many trees do you are you going to plant? How many volunteers are you going to engage? Um, those are all things that they're going. We'll have to have that kind of uh, clarity in it. So you know, maybe what we need to do is, um, you know, I would suggest that Mr. Schnobrick being uh, uh, ha having the level of expertise that he does. If he's willing to work with uh, someone on the committee here, uh, on the commission, and kind of you know ferret out some of those, um, get that put together, and possibly email everyone on the commission for input uh, on that, and uh, and, he, and sign off on it, uh, that we agree that that those are you know, doable numbers and, and things that we would like to engage in, uh, then we could take that to the city council and uh, ask for their approval to move forward with the application. So that's that's what, I'm, you know, I'm just seeing if Mr. Schnumber <laughs> would be willing to, to assist on that. Um, Madam Chair, I would, um, I'd be willing to do that and like, like uh, Scott said maybe that would be a starting point is to get some ideas down and you as a as a tree advisory commission would yay nay yep. that type of thing gives you some some platform to start from right. and then I could interject some ideas that I would have and then you would either add to or amend or take away or whatever at your discretion what you you know the community better than I do but I would base it on past grants and some other things that have happened and what might be successful and what might not be. That might be a basis for you to start. Yeah, good point. Okay. So since we won't have uh, another meeting with a quorum between now and then, I think we'll need to vote to move on that we want to put in for this grant. Um, so that way we can take that to the board and say that we've already um, 
So I'll open it up for motions. Uh, Madam Chair, I would move that we, uh, on, with the guidance of Mr. Schnoberg and one of the commission members, um, at least one, that we move forward with this uh, grant proposal um, to present, ultimately present to the city council in time enough to uh, get the grant in uh, and looking for a proposal to do that. So that's, that's my motion. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? All right, any opposed? Okay, thank you. So now do we have any volunteers <laughs> to um, kind of take the lead on this? I'm willing to help, but I don't want to be the lead on it. Well, I think, I think, Madam Chair, I think Mr. Schnolbrick could basically be the lead. And if, if you were involved in, uh, as a second pair of eyes looking at it um, with your expertise, uh, you know, put something out there and, and then get, get it to the rest of us. And as, as you said, we could thumbs up, thumbs down, we need this, that's too many people, this isn't, you know, doesn't sound right, this sounds good, that type of thing. I don't know. Madam Chair, is that to be filled out from the commission, the tree commission, or the park and rec department, or who's actually submitting it? Besi I mean, city of New Ulm. It'd be the city of New Ulm. City of New Ulm, probably. But is, like, is the park and rec department gonna be involved in? Well, I think it's the tree commission. Okay. Okay, we are a body of the city of New Ulm, okay? So the applicant would be the city of New Ulm slash tree commission. Okay. There's typically a name though, or project lead, I believe. I haven't opened this application, but I think you still have to have a contact person. Maybe that would be Tom. Um, since Tom's not here, we can say that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just have to decide who that application person could be. It's just a contact person. Yeah, it could be Mark. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. You know, well, it might not. It might have to be. Someone. I think it would have to be. Probably someone. have to be somebody in the city. Yeah. We can get the mayor. M Madam Chair. Yep. I know. I I see Mayor Boisman is here. Exactly. I'm wondering. <laughs> I think one of the components was a commitment by the city saying that if you are awarded this grant that um, you would have sufficient funds to to upfront the money. I know and I don't know if there's a city council meeting between now and the 8th of February or not. Um, there should be two. Two. Okay. Okay. I was just I just wanted to bring that up because I know that'll be a component part of the application process. First, first I believe that Oh, first Tuesday is the second. Uh, first Tuesday is the second. Yeah. Mm, even one then before you. Okay. Okay. That'd probably be a good one for you. Yeah. And what when, when is the proposal due? It said February eighth. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, I think it's mailed in. I can't remember. If it's an electronic application or if it's. Yeah, it says more mail mail proposals it says it by certified yeah. mail. Yeah. yeah. Um, postmark deadline is February eighth, which okay. is a Monday. Um, and then applicants will be notified by February 19th. Yeah. And oh. it also mentioned... Um, you can do certified mail too. Yeah, it mentioned getting a, an MOU of under, a memorandum of understanding from the city about the match. Right. Um, so that would probably need to be done at the city council meeting. Right. Madam Chair, does the, does the mayor feel that, that you would need to present it at one council meeting and at an, and discuss with any discussions if there was anything to throw back at the Tree Advisory Commission to change or do that could be done? I would strongly urge that you uh, be on the agenda for the 19th. Okay. And have a re at least one representative here.
who wants to go to the meeting on the 19th? I'd have to look at my schedule. Maybe we can do that over email, determining which one of us will um, represent on the 19th. I would imagine whoever's going to attend is going to have to know a lot about what we're, what this is all about. Right. Well, we should all so be up to speed because we'll have those numbers by that time. By that time, and you know, this is what we're going to do. And okay, yeah. so the nineteenth will kind of be our deadline to get some of those initial things um, figured out to right. present to the city council. Right. Okay. And that'll lay on Mr. Schnorbrick and and your expertise. Madam Chair, may I, um, while you have your Tree Advisory Commission here right now, I know in the past you have laid out a number of, of objectives that you wanted to see your, your community forestry program going. I think it was um, uh, tree survey was one, mm -hmm. I think um, preparing and updating your b b boulevard or your tree planting and diversification, those types of things. I, I'm bringing this up. Is there anything that the Tree Commission feels is of utmost priority that would be eligible for this grant. And if you notice that the categories were uh, a tree inventory, uh, master uh, writing a master tree plan, that was eligible, I think, uh, a component to this grant. You could use grant funds and, and time to do that. Um, uh, of course, tree planting, uh, that, tree, that tree inventory I already mentioned. Um, uh, is there any is there anything that that do you feel it should that you would want to see as part of this grant for sure? I uh, like um, the idea of both a survey and a kind of a master plan that would incorporate uh, planning for emerald ash borer, so you know what we have and where we would stand if EAB gets here, and then how we would handle that. I think that'd be a great idea. And just as a, as a small clue, what, what I think what the DNR Forestry is looking at is as part of this grant to show its worthiness, they want to see a community take the, the accomplishments from this grant and be prepared and move on further up their community forestry um, livelihood or, or history. And I think those are great ideas. The other, th the other thing is you're going to, you're never going to get an opportunity like this to get the University of Minnesota in to help train citizens on. Remember, this is over two right. years now. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. It's a lot of planning, a lot of uh, time to plan in there. They're going to come in and they're going to train and have classes and teach people, private citizens, that can take this information home and utilize themselves for tree diseases, tree ID, tree inventorying techniques. Um, that you'll, you'll never get an opportunity like that again to do that. So I think that. Mm -hmm. A tree survey or tree inventory would be a, a great, a great priority. Madam Chair, my the two bullets that I that I am most interested in are the last two on the grant funds can be used for production of materials used to enlist citizen involvement, educate developers, builders, residents, and community decision makers about urban and community forest resources, and then education and outreach programs and materials. So if we have something in place that um, not only could you do um, events, you know, some events or, or whatever, uh, then you would have solid materials that people could take with them, keep for their, for their own reference and educate the community, the greater community that way. Um, yeah, I mean, and if you want numbers on those, I think, you know, you could pick just about anything based on what you would think some realistic events could draw for people and uh, and and how many you know how many how much distribution of those materials you'd need to have and what the cost of those you know maybe it's a disc uh, that people take with them you know uh, something like that so and I think it speaks to the grant as well uh, you, you brought up the the idea of uh, citizen involvement, and that's what this whole thing is about. Right. So if that's going to be that, it should be fairly strong in that part of the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Sparlin, 
I, I just want to clarify. I guess by that, do you mean, I guess I don't like the idea of purchasing pieces of paper that people read and then they, they pick it up and then they throw it away. Right. I'm thinking, you know, face-to-face -face trainings, oh. things like that maybe, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of time, especially this day and age, people can really look things up on the internet and it's sure. like, oh, what is this, what is this, sure. without killing a tree <laughs> to right. make paper and that somebody's gonna read and, mm -hmm. and then throw away. So I, that would be my, you know, I guess I'm not sure about materials to hand out because I kind of see that as a as a waste um, maybe limited but not lots of that kind of thing um, but you know I gee Tony you do so much of that just in your business with educating we should just pay Tony because <laughs> he I mean he gets so many phone calls at his at his business and he does all the stuff on the on the um, the radio where he's educating you know it would be you know somebody like a Tony or a Tony well, there's there's lots of educated people out there that be willing but to people help. go to you I mean it just sure. would be you can see there's a need because mm -hmm. Tony gets call after call after call sure. of, um, at his business about what should I plant what's wrong with my tree da 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 and Tony ends up feeling fielding all that stuff so I think there's a need um, so the, what I was what I was getting at was more of an <coughs> electronic like a disc uh -huh. that you could have that would have the the amount of material on it that would be um, applicable to New Ulm in the New Ulm area, mm -hmm. that which people could, at any time, could put it in their computer, research what they need to find about New Ulm that's New Ulm specific, so they don't have to, you know, go all over the internet and try, try to find something. This is very related to the New Ulm area, mm -hmm. to our growing zone, to what the trees that we have here, and so that disc would be usable, reusable, and then if we produce the professional disc. Um, we could run it on the access channel mm -hmm. um, all the time, you know, and, ha and have, it, uh, have it for something that y you could do that in twofold. One would be an information disk, and the other one would be uh, an educational half hour segment with the latest, you know, whether it's wilt or, or bore or whatever. So that, that's more of what I was thinking. I was not, no, I was not thinking of a, a threefold thing, no. Okay. So. All right, well, these are all great discussion topics. Um, so I'll start working with Mark here and then watch your email as I'm sure you will be getting right. <laughs> lots of e email regarding this topic as I start um, asking questions, so. All right, so I believe on this topic we've voted on what we need to and we can move forward. Um, and so that kind of brings us back to um, the Emerald Ash Borer Planning, the Forester position, and some of those others. And um, Actually, Madam President, if I could uh, continue the discussion just for a brief sure. moment on the uh, application. Um, as far as a uh, matching funding source, uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to consider uh, to set aside funds within the tree commission. Uh, okay. I guess the first question would be if we would have the potential funds to cover that. Mm -hmm. And then the second uh, question would be if that is something the commissioners would like to pursue or if it would be assigned from a, a separate city fund. Yeah, I guess I but think Go ahead. Madam Chair, um, you know, I, it, that's all relative to how much money we're going to ask for. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what what that looks like. You know, we, we need a budget based on the actions we're going to say we're going to do. And that's that's what would do that. And then we could set that money aside within the, the commission itself. Yeah, so if we need... Um money set aside ahead of time, then we'd probably have to vote on that at our next meeting. But I believe we could put in for the application um, without actually having that money set aside since we won't know right. if we got it yet or not. Um, but we would uh, need to figure that out to present to the city council to let them know, um, yeah, if we need it within our budget or like you said, outside. All right, I don't have any answers for you. 
<laughs> okay. Well, um, and I guess uh, but, uh, good point. Uh, having not knowing what the uh, scope of the project is, we may not have that. Um, thinking if there's a, a maximum portion, you know, say if it's twelve percent of or twelve point five percent of, uh, say fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, you know, if that's something that could be covered wholly within the mm-hmm. free commission funding for the 2016 year. Yeah. Do you believe that the, um, like your program, the money allotted towards that would count as a match towards this? I think it would, but I don't, I'm just not sure. Um, uh, for the conservation improvement programs uh, through uh, the public utilities, I believe that most likely would not be a, a okay. eligible use. Um, uh, the funds through the public utilities program are purely for energy conservation okay. um, and uh, more specifically through electricity savings. Um, and depending on the project, uh, that may be a possibility, but I, I would guess many of these projects would not, uh, not count towards that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. Ellen, would like to add something to the discussion? Ellen Van Cura, 833 Cottonwood. Um, I j- I, one comment about this timeline with the City Council. I did do two grant applications, one successful, one not, uh, through Tree Commission. And t- so I've talked with Tom twice, and his. Um, the rule is anything over a thousand dollars has to be approved by the city council but when i did mine there seemed to be the step where the tree commission well, i don't want to call it a subcommittee of the park and rec but it might is there a park and rec committee uh, meeting between here and that 15th council we're meeting we're not a subcommittee of the park and rec well i just tom tom always said well it has to go through park and rec and then bring it to the city that was for the grant for the Buckthorn. Yeah, but I, I think we can direct. Okay, take. but I, that's just a comment. I would just double check. I, I will know. clarify with Tom. Yeah, that. yeah, that's my only concern. <coughs> and then, um, can there be some consideration about um, with the tree survey um, something about? Because I don't think trees can grow if they're taken over by invasive species. So, some sort of consideration of. Uh, mitigation of invasive species that kill trees. <laughs> I don't know how that could, would we work. We could explore that and see okay. if we could somehow work it in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. All right. Okay, so I will clarify with Tom on whether or not we need to um, go through the other committee as well, the Park and Rec. And if so, um, Madam Chair, I, yeah, Madam Chair, yeah. I, I think it probably was because Ellen's group was doing work within parks, inside parks, uh, exclusively. And I, I, I yeah, agree so with Mr. Sparlin that you go directly to the city council, and if they decide they want something to go through the park and rec, they can approach that. Right. Okay. Even if we plant trees in parks. Well, you can certainly run it by yeah. the. the Okay. Mr. Uh, yeah. Tom, when you see him, Mr. Schmitz, but I don't believe that it's necessary. Okay, good. That's one less thing to worry about. Great. <laughs> All right, any further discussion on that? All right, so we're kind of running short on time here. So um, just in the interest of time, with the <coughs> EAB and the Forrester position, does anyone feel strongly that we need to do those subcommittees now? Madam Chair, I, w- some of that would be uh, addressed in this proposal. Yeah, I believe so. so I, th- as I think well. a lot of this could be, uh, you know, EAB, the Forest Service and Tree Survey, Blight, S- Center Street Hill, all that could be included okay. and mentioned in the proposal. So mm-hmm. it, we would be addressing each one of those. All right. As well as the Tree City USA designation. Okay, um, so then let's jump to the Tree City USA designation. 
Tom's not here, but Mark, did you have any update on that as we discussed at the last meeting? Yeah, again, Mark Schnobrick. <clears throat> um, I worked very closely with Joey Shugel, and um, he and I completed the application process and then had to be submitted to the DNR Forestry Office by December 31st. And uh, really, Joey took the uh, uh, bull by the horns on that one and completed the rest of it. I know, I think that maybe even the mayor, did you sign it? Did, do you remember doing that? Mayor Boisman? I would, I would, you were I would answer um, certainly, but Mayor Boisman is, uh, the mayor is usually one of the, the, the applicants that applies, and that oftentimes is just a, 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 a category that's just automatically done. But no, it's in, submitted, and you should be hearing back here by, by soon. You'll be, if you are awarded, you would, um, again, it's for 2015, but you're always awarded the following year, which is now 2016. So you should be hearing very soon. So congratulations okay. on that and getting that Great. in. Well, thank you for your help on that. You're welcome. Sure, Ellen. Ellen Vancura. Another it, something I would that I would su want to or suggest maybe for the um, uh, for the grant is the issue of erosion control when a a, a large amount of of invasive species has been removed as far as the forestry. Mm -hmm. If you look at the east side of, of South Park, you can see the concern. And there are, are other places that, uh, where it is uh, pretty bare. So as far as something in the application about erosion, planting trees or whatever for erosion control when the invasive okay. species have been taken out. Okay. Yep, we can make note of okay. that. Thank you. All right. Um, there were two other items on here that uh, we had from Tom, the Center Hill Street the Center Street Hill tree and shrub plantings and other tree plantings. Since Tom's not here, let's just table those um, for next time, unless someone else has an update on them. All right. Um, is there any new business that we did not cover yet? Not hearing any. All right. Um, so our next meeting is Thursday, March 3rd at 4 p.m. again here in the City Hall Chambers. And if I, we don't have any other topics to discuss, um, then the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>